All right, welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a solo episode today, just me here. We were supposed to have a guest with us talking about reclaiming focus, a conversation on entrepreneurial liberation. That is a mouthful. And I'm going to tackle this one. I'm going to go ahead and um, take a stab at it, mostly because this is pretty much exactly what we talked about in the inner circle yesterday. Um, if you are not in the inner circle with us, I'm going to throw that up on the screen here. Um, go on over to what, what if.com slash inner circle to check that out. It's a, the mastermind. Unlike any other mastermind, it's a really a business accelerator. I hate the term mastermind. We can't stand it at what if, um, we just can't really find a better term to be honest with you, but masterminds are so diluted these days and everybody and their mother has a mastermind. They have one because, because of their name, because of their reputation, but what do they actually deliver? I just had this conversation with somebody getting before going live here uh, for this episode. And it's so frustrating to me, the current market of information and mentorship and masterminds in, in the coaching and consulting world. And quite honestly, myself and Sean here at what if we're just, we're over it. We met in a mastermind that was a bunch of fluff and BS and there's really no action. Um, and what they preach to you, not just this one, but pretty much everyone I've ever been a part of is just working on, you know, the mindset to get in the state of doing business. Well, when are you going to tell me what to do to grow my business? That's why I'm here. Well, that's what we're all about. And that's why we do things a little bit differently. Our whole deal at What If is we're disruptors. We disrupt the way you see your business. We're, we disrupt the way you we do masterminds. And it's not a mastermind. It's a business accelerator. So let's accelerate your business. But today, we're going to reclaim your focus and your time. I think if we start this conversation at the beginning, what is, what is focus? Really, where should your focus be is the question. As a leader, as an entrepreneur... A lot of times we get busy doing the busy work and we don't necessarily focus where we should be focused. Now, I've talked about this on previous episodes. We talked about this on Inner Circle preview shows. So if you've heard me say this, say this before, I hope you've at least done it. And if you haven't, take a second here to go through this process. But we'll, I'll mention the four Ds. This is the exercise that we talk about in uh, the serenity discipline of the harmonious business architecture. And that would be the third discipline that we tackle in order with our clients. So we're going to go through navigation and then operate. And then we're going to get to um, serenity as number three. So when we get to serenity, one of the things that we do first is filter out what you're doing as the leader, as the CEO, as the founder, the owner, whatever you want to call yourself. What is it that you should be doing? And then let's filter this out out through your entire team. There's so much wasted time and effort going on in businesses that we just, we feel busy, which makes us feel good, but it completely takes our focus away from achieving the vision and the outcomes that we're actually chasing that are going to move our business forward. So the exercise that I mentioned, the four D's is very simply do delegate, delay, and delete. Now that's the typical order we we tackle things in we it, when things come at us opportunities challenges whatever it may be the first thing we say is can i do it as the entrepreneur and then it's can i delegate it can i delay it or can i delete it all together we need to flip that script we need to go the complete opposite way and say when things cross your plate and opportunities come up say can i delete this is, do you have a filter in place to say, is this moving me towards my goal as a company, as a human being, whatever, is this opportunity, is this challenge, is this problem, is this situation moving me towards my goal or is it a distraction? If it is and it has nothing to do with your goal, you need to delete it. It's that simple. Get it off your plate. It, it is an opportunity for somebody else, not for you. The next one is delay. Say, okay, is this is this an opportunity for moving me toward my goal? If the answer is yes, then we can delay it because does it have to be done now? The answer is no. No means we can delay it to some future date, put it on your calendar, set a reminder in your phone, whatever you want to do, just don't do it right now. The third option would be delegate it. If the answer to the previous question was, can I do I need to do it right now? And the answer is yes. Well, can I delegate it to somebody else on my team? 
There's so many things that come up that are great opportunities. They have to be done now. It's the whole urgent versus important kind of thing. If it's urgent and important, can you delegate it? Can it go to someone on your team? Is there someone as competent or more competent than you at it? And I think not to get too sidetracked here, but we don't give people enough credit and we give ourselves way too much credit at this portion of, of the four D's. We always think as entrepreneurs that we are God's gift to the earth and nobody can do it like we do it, right? That's why our name is on the business. I've heard that uh, over and over from a number of different people. Well, that's false. And you know it is. That's just That just means you have an ego problem. If you believe that you are the only person who can truly do every task to the highest level in your business, you're just, you're an idiot and you're lying to yourself. I'm sorry to break it to you that way, but let's be blunt here and let's get right to the point. It is said, I will give you this stat that when you delegate something to somebody for the first time, they will typically do it to 70 to 80% of the capabilities that you have. Well, guess what? They haven't been trained or doing it as long as you have been doing it. If you give it to them a couple of times, they'll get better at it. And that's probably something they can focus on. So eventually they'll end up being better than you and they should retrain you on how to do it. That's the type of stuff I'm talking about. You have to delegate as much as possible if it's not something that you and only you can uniquely do, which brings us to the final D, which is do. If, if you went through the other three filters, you tried to delete it, you couldn't. You tried to delay it, you couldn't. You tried to delegate it, you couldn't. Now you can do it. And that is what we call at what if the golden line. If things get past those first three phases of the four D's and the answer is always no, then you have to do it. Then that is something that goes on your calendar and it's called above the golden line. It's it's something that you, as, as probably your mother would say, you as the unicorn in this world can only do. So that is the filter we need to take in place that we need to have in place, excuse me, when when filtering opportunities, challenges, problems, whatever it is, as they come across our plate. And that's really the root of, of focus, of reclaiming focus. Because a lot of times, like I said, we bounce from, from opportunity to opportunity, from task to task, and you have this, this micro switching that's going on. You're, you're focused five minutes here, five minutes there. You have social media pulled up, your email, your calendar. You're, you're working on a, a blog post at the same time. You have 27 tabs open on your computer. How could you possibly be focused in any one area? It's impossible. Even if you have things on your mind, you're not fully focused on the task that you're doing that you have in front of you right now. So what we talked about yesterday on the inner circle in the serenity module and the serenity discipline was reclaiming your calendar. And that's the whole idea behind serenity. It's it's not the, the traditional discipline is time management, which is stupid to call it that because who can manage time? God manages time, not you. That's like sticking a, a boat full of people with oars in the river and saying, manage the river. You can't do it. The river is flowing. You can just manage where you are in the river. So the whole concept of serenity is managing your calendar. We all get the same 24 hours in a day, and we're all hopefully sleeping for eight of them. So what you do with the other 16 and how you maximize them and how you make sure you string together day after day of productivity and efficiency, but also not killing yourself at the same time is really where the magic happens. And that's why we cover serenity so early in the conversation. I think that's backwards from what most people talk about too, because they keep time management and all that other stuff calendars at the end of the conversation. They want to pile on things to do first to grow your business, make more money, triple your profits. Those are all really great things. But if you're not managing your time at the beginning and you're not managing your calendar, then that other stuff is never going to come because you're going to be so overworked and burnt out by the time you get there that there's no possible way you have the energy to actually give the focus required to each task at that point. So we want to caution against that. And, and what we talked about in the inner circle, like I said, was was reclaiming your calendar. So I want to actually go ahead and, and share my screen here. Um, so you can see the exercise that we're going through. Um, and I would love to invite you to go through it as well this week. And it's very simple. 
So if you look at my calendar here, this is how I schedule things out. So I have put every single thing on my calendar, including personal time, so that I know exactly where my minutes are going. And I can review at the end of the week where I spent that time. So you'll see on this calendar up until, so from Monday until Monday and Tuesday, we'll say, there's a lot of white space, right? Well, starting yesterday, we actually challenged everybody in the inner circle to do a time study. And I, I personally hate time studies, but I think it's so important to really see where you're spending your time and, and what you're working on. Is it getting you towards your, your outcome? We, we follow a 12-week sprint method here at What If. So for us, we're coming up towards the end of the year, towards the end of uh, one of our 12 weeks, and we have some big goals to accomplish that are not done yet. And I need to be able to look at my calendar and say, have I spent my time in a way that I'm actually achieving those goals? Am I going to achieve those outcomes or am I wasting my time? So if you look at Monday and Tuesday, there's not a whole lot on the calendar. I have a couple of things, but a lot of white space. Once you hit Wednesday and today, um, I have a lot of stuff scheduled in there and I have pretty much zero open minutes uh, on Wednesday because I went back and I recorded everything that I did. And this is part of the time study that we're doing. So I would encourage you to do the same thing. I have different categories set up here. I have different um, calendars set up here. So you, when people schedule meetings with me, it goes on one of these five calendars and they show up as different colors. Then at the end of the week, you can see here on Friday afternoon, I have uh, a metrics review, a company metrics review, and then a weekly review. And that's where I'll go through and I'll analyze this calendar and say, okay, good, bad, or indifferent. Do I need to make changes for next week? Do I need to take things off, move things around, do less of something, do more of something? How am I and tied to the metrics review? Are we on track to, to meet the, the outcomes that we've set? Or do I need to readjust some things? I don't think you need to do this every single day as far as reviewing where you spent your time and everything, but you do need to do it once a week um, at the very minimum. I think uh, Tony Robbins said it. I, I heard it from him first, at least. If you measure something once a year, you'll have bad years. If you measure something once a month, you'll have bad months. If you measure something once a week, you'll have bad weeks. And if you measure something once a day, you'll have bad days. So he's taken the idea in his companies that they measure some things three times a day. If you can't afford to have a bad day on, on some particular metric, measure it three, four times a day. As, as much as you possibly can without inconveniencing yourself and your team, it should be measured. So what you focus on, where your, where your time is being spent, is really the conversation of reclaiming your focus. Because we don't even know what we're focusing on. And that's why we have the whole 12-week year and we do the 12-week sprints here. So we do 12 weeks and then we have one week of debrief, which is basically reviewing the last 12 weeks and setting up the next 12 weeks so that we're always working towards this mini sprint and achieving the outcomes that will get us closer to our five-year vision. The whole harmonious architecture feeds off of itself. So everything you can already see, I'm talking about analyze your metrics. I'm talking about uh, serenity. Your vision comes from navigation and Operation is is the how you're doing things that you're doing um, in, in the manner that's going to get you closer to your goals. So those are just really the first four disciplines, but everything is leveraged against each other. And that's the magic of the system. I never scheduled my calendar like this until recently. And I can't even tell you the difference it's made. I'm able to go look at my calendar at a glance and say, am I on track for the week? I can look Monday morning and just look at the colors and say, am I on track am I, to have a good week? I know before the week starts, what's going to happen. Rarely do I let meetings come onto my calendar the same day. I need at least a buffer day. And very rarely do I look back at the end of the week and say, wow, I wasted a week. <clears throat> and that's the whole point of measuring as frequently as you can afford to have a bad period. So if I can't afford to have a bad week, we only have 52 of them in a year. 50, if you look at a normal work year, can I have a bad year or bad week? Can 2% of my year be bad? I don't want that. 
So I look every single day, what does my calendar look like? Do I need to switch any, everything around? And then when I review it at the end of the week, that's where I can tie it to metrics and say, no, this was a great week. If we looked at that calendar that we had there, I had, uh, I think, let's count. I had about seven podcast episodes, which you're hearing me do right now. Um, I was on two other podcasts and I had two other meetings uh, to be on future podcasts. That's great. That's moving us towards our goal. We had the inner circle call. We had a lot of bad review calls. That means we're helping people understand where their business is, what they need more clarity on and helping them achieve their goals. That's all. That's what we're all about here. I had a great week. It's only Thursday and I have two more bad calls coming up tomorrow and some more podcasts. I am on track this week to have a great week. And I know that before the week is over and before I even look at the metrics, I don't have to look at the metrics to see if I'm having a good week in terms of serenity because the calendar says it to me. So my challenge for you is for the next five business days, for the next week, why don't you dive in? and study where your time is. I'm not saying go crazy and print off sheets of paper and record every single second of your day, but schedule your day out, put your personal items on there, work around it, and then fill in the white space with things that are going to get you closer to your goal. If you're not doing that, you're really not managing your outcomes. And if you're not managing your outcomes, then the title of this episode, Entrepreneurial Liberation, will never happen because you're at the mercy of your calendar but you don't even know what it says. If you are not proactive with what you schedule, put on your calendar and get in your day-to-day -day routine, it will fill up. The hours always go by. Just be sure that you are the one dictating what happens in them as much as possible so that you can experience serenity and you can achieve the goals in your business. It's really not that hard. When we went through it with the inner circle folks yesterday, um, it was, it was eye opening because most people don't do it this way. But once you start, once you see the outcomes and the results that are possible and you go through one to two weeks of a, of a quick time study, you're, it's going to change the way you look at your time in your business. I guarantee it. So that's my challenge for this episode. Uh, you already heard about what disciplines of the architecture we talked about, and this is the perfect time to do it. We're coming up on a new year, at least at the recording of this episode. So I would say if you're going to do it, do it now. Set up your next 12 months for success. And if you want to really set up your next 12 months for success, head on over to whatif.com slash navigate. We believe that the strategic planning model that is generally accepted by businesses of all sizes is just beyond broken. You can't just say you're going to double your revenue or triple your profit or work half the time. That is not a strategic plan. And you also can't strategic plan like the Fortune 100 and 500 because they have way more resources than you. And they also have other people to please like shareholders, boards, um, CEOs, and all these other things that you don't even have to worry about. So don't follow their model. Don't follow the cool entrepreneur leaning on a Lamborghini model. Let's do it the right way. Let's actually get you to achieve the goals that you want to in your business and set goals that scare you a little bit. We're going to get you there. It's going to be super easy. Whatif.com slash navigate. Join us for a five-day workshop coming up. And guess what? It's absolutely free. It's one hour a day for five days. It's free. There is a VIP upgrade to come hang out with us um, and get your questions answered behind the scenes so we can really supercharge your business. But I promise you, we're going to deliver in this workshop and we're going to make sure you have the tools and resources you need to actually have a strategic plan in place. And you will already be ahead of the competition if you have that, because I bet you they don't. So don't miss out. Don't let your competition jump on this and you sit back and do the same thing you've done every year. Jump on it. Whatif.com slash navigate. I will see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. This has been a good one. Go manage your time and join us in the workshop. We'll see you there.